Living in Florida or any other coastal state that is a target for a hurricane, you probably have loads of experience already getting ready for the hurricane. What you don't hear a lot about is what you should do if you plan to shelter in place and ride out the storm. More importantly, where to begin when we're faced with the destruction and the damage when it's all over. Today, I'm going to provide you the things that you need to know to make this process a little less painful. A checklist of supplies, to-dos, and a list of who you should contact and what you should do if a loss occurs. Plus, I'm going to give you some tips that you may have not thought of in the past. So let's dive in. First, let's take a look at each of the hurricane category levels and what they mean as far as what you need to do to prepare. A Cat 1 storm will have winds 74 to 95 miles per hour, and a Cat 2 storm will reach winds up to 110 miles per hour. Both levels of storms could result in roof shingles flying off, gutter damage, and shallow rooted trees upturned. Power outage could last up to a few weeks. A Category 3 storm will have winds 111 to 129 miles per hour. A Category 3 will result in some devastating damage. Some roofs may blow off and larger trees will be uprooted, causing widespread and longer periods of power outages. A Cat 4 hurricane will have winds 130 to 156 miles per hour. A Cat 4 storm will leave behind catastrophic damage. And we're defining catastrophic damage as being defined as power outages lasting up to months and most of the area being uninhabitable. Cat 5 hurricane will have winds of more than 157 miles per hour. Catastrophic damage is a 100% certainty and most frame homes destroyed, the area uninhabitable for months, and sadly, the human death rate will be much higher. Let's talk a little bit about preparation. The weather people are going to give you a three or four days heads up before the storm hits. Don't wait until the night before the storm hits to start gathering your supplies and battening down the hatches. I put a checklist down in the description of all the things you need to gather. Through the years, you probably have all these things already gathered up in a plastic tub. But what's not on this list is a few things that you'll be glad you did after the storm. Make sure you take plenty of pictures and video of everything inside and outside of your home before the storm hits. Be familiar with your homeowner's insurance policy. What it covers and what it doesn't cover especially water damage. If you're unsure, please call your insurance agent before the storm arrives. Put all your important documents and your treasured items in a plastic watertight container or bin with a lid. The items that go in this container are any item that can't be replaced by an insurance check. With most hurricanes, even cats one and two, you're gonna have some power outages. And if you've got a generator, great. Just make sure that you keep it away from the house and away from flammable materials. And have it chained up like to a tree to avoid theft. Use your empty milk containers. Fill them up with water and freeze them. This is going to keep your refrigerator cold and also as it melts, it's going to provide you with drinking water. Of course, we're all going to keep our phones charged. But what happens if there's no service? after the storm. Did you know that if the clock is working on your phone, you'll always be able to text. But if everything is dead, download the free app called Zello. It works like a walkie-talkie and you can communicate with others. Just make sure the people you want to communicate with download the app before the storm hits too. Also, I put a link below for a grocery checklist. You'll want to check out that link because you're going to find loads of meals that you could prepare ahead that will keep for several days. What if there's a sewage outage? Whatever you do, don't flush your toilet. Sewage lift stations could be down and could cause sewage to back up into your house. Ew! Consider getting a portable toilet, like the kind they have in boats and campers. You could get one at Walmart for around $70. Or if you're on a tight budget, you could find a portable toilet like this one at any sporting goods stores for around $20. Emergency management officials typically recommend that all Florida residents who do not live in an evacuation zone stay home during most tropical storms and hurricanes, with the exception of those who are in poor health, elderly, or in the last trimester of pregnancy. Gather all your disaster supplies and take them to your safe room. 
Your safe room should be in the center of your house with no windows, like a bathroom, closet, or a hallway. Now is the time to install your hurricane shutters. If you don't have hurricane shutters, board all your windows and doors off, including your garage door. In the description, I put a link to a video that is super easy to follow so you can make and install your own window boards. Turn your refrigerator and freezer to the coldest setting. This will keep your stuff colder for a longer period of time just in case there is a power outage. Now is the time to put those frozen jugs of water to good use. Turn off and properly secure all your propane tanks. But keep them in an accessible area. You're going to need these after the storm to heat up canned foods, boil water, and the like. If you own a generator, make sure that you have all your gas containers filled. And while you're at the gas station, top off all your vehicles too in case there is a shortage after the storm. Unplug all small appliances and anything with a light bulb. This is going to help protect your belongings from power surges once the power is restored. Do you still have a fax machine? Get an old-fashioned phone and plug it in. Yep, you can still buy one on Amazon for about $15. It works great for outbound calls. Bring a battery powered smoke detector and a carbon monoxide detector into your safe room or hallway. And finally, if you should develop a hole or your roof should blow off, have a mattress readily accessible in your safe room to shield you against flying debris and wind. After the storm passes, the first thing, check in with friends and family, let them know you're okay. Contact the American Red Cross if you're unable to reach friends and family. They maintain a shelter database to help you reconnect with loved ones. You'll find the contact information for the Red Cross along with all the other state and local agencies in the link I provided for you in the description. Look for interior damage to your home. Seek alternative shelter the moment you smell gas, you have fire damage, or you have rising waters that aren't receding from your home. When it's time to go outside to assess the damage, be careful and use the buddy system. Have one ass assess the damage and the other one check out the yard for snakes, broken glass, down power lines. Immediately report any gas leaks or any down power lines. Again, I'm providing you all of those contacts in one easy document that you can download, print, put on your refrigerator and have forever. What do you do when you do have a loss? Where do you begin? First, protect your property from any further damage. Only make reasonable and necessary repairs. It's important to keep all of your receipts regarding the temporary repairs and also any expenses that may be considered for reimbursement. Next, make a written list of all your damaged property. If possible, write down the name, brand, serial number, manufacturers, and the date of purchase. Hopefully you took lots of pictures and video of your personal items before the storm hit. Now separate all the damaged property and put it in a secure place. A claims adjuster will need to examine all the damaged property to fully estimate your loss. I'd like to thank our friends at ServPro for providing a lot of this information shared with you today. Did you know that ServPro can also help you with your insurance claims? The last thing you want to do is worry about an insurance claim. ServPro can actually help you process the paperwork or oversee the claim if necessary. After the initial shock of this violent ordeal, be thankful you and your loved ones are all in one piece. And remember, the most of the things that were damaged or destroyed can be replaced with an insurance check. If you choose to write it out, please take advantage of all the checklists and valuable advice I provided for you here today and share with your friends and loved ones. I'm Lisa Kelly, Lakeland Homes and Lifestyles with Premier Realty. And until then, I'll see you on the next one.